Okay, we will start uh, this uh, lecture. It's on the normal distribution and its applications. And uh, I would like to uh, let you understand how we will proceed from now on. Uh, you will watch my lecture. Uh, if during the lecture I ask you to pause, then please pause and try answering the question or opening a link that I will give you and watch it uh, and then come back to this uh, video, please. This will make you understand things better. Okay, so um, if you look at the news these days, you know that uh, uh, we have the coronavirus disease uh, COVID-19 and um, if you go to YouTube uh, there are two uh, videos that stand out and they are very important for you to watch uh, the one here with the link uh, and you will find also this uh, link in the description of uh, this video and please also watch this um, uh, other video uh, which uh, talks about what the chart really means for the coronavirus when you create the chart. So this is good because it shows you that statistics is applicable everywhere. And in our days, uh, specifically now, uh, it's important that you understand the normal distribution because it will make you understand these two videos. So uh, please wa watch these two videos after you finish this lecture. Now... Uh, the normal distribution is the most important distribution uh, in uh, statistics. Of course, you know that it's a continuous distribution. Uh, the reason why it's uh, the most important, uh, we have three reasons here, but there are other reasons. But those are the main ones, that many random variables can be properly modeled as normally distributed. Heights, weights, IQ... And as you saw here, also you can model uh, epidemics and uh, disease control. Uh, okay. Also, uh, many other continuous distributions can be approximated by a normal distribution. So this gives it another importance, is that you can approximate other distributions uh, that are continuous using the normal distribution. That is why people believe that it, it is the cornerstone distribution of statistical inference. So it's the most important distribution in statistics. Now, where does it come from? If you take a random variable, this is the definition here, with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, uh, we say that it's uh, normally distributed and we abbreviate this um, this way. The n is from normal, mu is the mean, sigma squared is the variance. Okay, and notice the standard deviation is sigma. It's the square root of the variance. But when you uh, write uh, the, that an x, a random variable, is normally distributed, uh, usually here you put the variance. Okay, it's an important thing to, uh, to note from, from now. Now, the probability density function uh, for the normal distribution is given by this. This is uh, for the normal distribution that has mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Notice where mu and sigma are in this uh, formula. Sigma appears in the denominator here and in the denominator of the exponential here. And mu appears here. Okay, and um, the most important uh, normal distribution is called the standard normal distribution. And this is when you let mu equal one, uh, sorry, mu equal zero and sigma equal one. So let us do it this way. Let's say when mu is zero and sigma is one, we get the uh, most basic normal distribution and it has a special name. We call it the standard normal distribution. It will help you because if mu is zero, this will go away. And if sigma is 1, then this 1 squared is 1, and 1 times anything is 1. So you're left with the probability density function E. Uh, so first, of course, the constant, 1 over radical 2 pi, E to the negative x squared over 2. 
this is the function that produces the graph of the standard normal uh, distribution. Uh, but in general, uh, see, if you want just the uh, any normal distribution, you must use this formula here, okay, where mu and sigma appear in the formula. Now, what I want to do is um, I prepared for you some uh, uh, thing on Desmos. This is um, an online math calculator. It's for free. You can sign up for it and start making your own uh, functions, graphs, uh, uh, simulations, modeling, and uh, check things. So I'm going to show you this, what I created. Uh, by the way, uh, the link to this will be in the description of the video. So let's show you Dismos now. So um, I will go here to show it to you. So let's open it uh, in full. Notice this here is uh, uh, the M. What I mean by the M that you see here is the mean and S is the standard deviation. Uh, that is mu and sigma, but I'm using m and s. Notice that I put m equal 0 and s equal 1. So what I'm getting is the graph of the uh, standard normal curve. And uh, let me take away the, the area. So this is the graph of the probability density function that you just saw uh, in a, a while ago in this one. So let's open this. Okay, go back and here, yeah. So this is the formula that I am producing now uh, and I'm going to change the mu and the sigma so that you see what happens with these things when they change. So let's go back to Dismos now and uh, if you increase, so le le let us zoom out a little bit so you can see things better. Now I'm going to play with the m, the m here, it's zero, yeah? But I'm going to move it to the right. I'll make it bigger. Look what happens to the graph. It uh, retains the same shape, but because the mean is the center, it moves with the center. So let's say you put the mean equal 6. This means that the middle uh, of this graph is exactly at 6. Now, what happens when you change the standard deviation? Now, the standard deviation that I put here is 1. Now, if I go more than one, look what happens. The variation becomes bigger and uh, almost eventually it becomes horizontal when the standard deviation is big enough. But still, look at what I will do now because this will be very important for you to understand what's happening next. Okay, so you see, you can graph it like this and uh, m equals 6 is still in the middle, you know, it's the mean. So here, 6 is in the middle. But look, if you zoom in in a certain way, you can make it look again similar to the standard normal curve. This is something important that we will learn how to go from any normal distribution to the standard normal distribution. So by, uh, for example, here, you can go by uh, the, uh, first subtracting mu, so go to zero. So it was six, yeah? was 6, so I go down to 0, subtracting 6, and then the standard deviation, divide by uh, the standard deviation 6.2, that will make s equal 1. So when we get to 1, this is our standard, I will just rescale it so you see it better, this is our standard normal uh, distribution curve. Uh, notice also that uh, if I increase the s, yeah, the variation is getting larger and larger. But if you go back to 1 and decrease it, look what happens. When you decrease it, the variation becomes smaller, and so it becomes narrower, 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 until you get to 0 where you don't have anything. Uh, all the, the, uh, the data for you are the same, so there is no deviation from the mean. So go back to 1 and put this at 0. Another thing that is important for you to know is that from uh, that the mean also can be negative you know the mean can be positive negative or zero uh, standard deviation can be only from zero up to uh, it doesn't have a maximum it depends on the question it can go all the way to infinity as big as you want uh, okay so this is just for you to understand that i can from any uh, normal distribution that i have get back to the standard normal distribution. 
Okay, so now let's go back to our notes. Now we understand this formula. We played a little bit with Dismos. Um, you will find the link to this uh, video on Dismos in the description of my video. And please go there and play with the parameters that I set. By the way, if you want to change the parameters, you can do that also. So, for example, you want uh, M not from minus 100 to 100. You want it from minus 1,000 to 1,000, let's say. Or even not necessarily the same number to 500. You choose whatever you like. I like to make it uh, minus 100 to 100 just um, because they seem to be good numbers. But standard deviation also, you can change it. I put it up to 16 here and the step is 0 0.01. This means that um, it moves up to two digits uh, after the decimal. So you make it move slowly. Uh, whereas for mu, I made the step one so that you go from one to two to three, even though uh, mu can be a decimal, but it's okay. Uh, sometimes for graphing calculators, it's, uh, it's hard to do that. You can make the step here equal also 0 0.01. Uh, zero 01 if you're interested in means that are accurate to two digits uh, but we shouldn't worry ourselves with this now let's just keep it as it was okay so now um, properties of the normal distribution um, all of this I have just uh, said all of those three here and uh, one thing to notice when you graph a normal distribution is that the mean, median, and mode are all equal, and they are in the center. Uh, the normal curve is bell-shaped. You see, it looks like a bell, like this. And uh, the total area under the curve is equal to 1. Always, for any normal distribution uh, curve, the area under it is 1, no matter what mu is or what sigma is. The reason is, because this probability density function, if you sum it up from negative infinity to infinity, you always get 1. Okay, so uh, also notice that uh, as uh, the x increases, the graph never touches the x-axis. It gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but never touches. Okay, from both sides, it gets arbitrarily close to the x-axis. Uh, okay, and uh, the total area again is one. Do not forget this important fact. This is why, because it's a probability uh, function, the total area under the graph should be one. Now, for the standard normal distribution, remember I told you what it is. It's the one whose mean is zero and whose standard deviation is one. So mu is zero, and you can see it here in the middle and sigma is 1, so you can see sigma here, okay? Um, and l let me uh, illustrate the kinds of questions that you should expect when you work with normal distributions. Um, sometimes we ask the question is, uh, find the area, let's say, that is below uh, z equal negative 1. So I uh, take this vertical line at negative 1, and the question is find this area to the left or below negative 1. This is one type of question, finding this area. So you have z equal negative 1, and so what, what we ask is, what is the area uh, to the left of this z? Let's call it z0. Uh, the nice fact also is that this area is the same as the probability that z is less than your z0, which in this case is negative 1. Okay, this is very important that areas and probabilities when you deal with normal distributions are the exact same thing. This is the first kind of question. Another question on, um, on, on it could be, uh, find the area between two z-scores, this one, let's say, and this one, between negative 2 and 1. Uh, maybe to illustrate it better, I want you to not think that you always get a specific uh, whole integer. Maybe you go from this value, so let's see, this will be z0 equal negative 1.8, and let's say we go to 2.2, so this one here is 2.2, and I'm interested in the area 
between these two Z scores. Okay, so this area also uh, can be uh, written as a probability. So we, we can say that this is the area between uh, Z0 equal minus 1.8 and Z1 equal 2.2. Or, at the same time, this is the probability that your z-score is between these two z-scores, negative 1.8 and 2.2, okay? And the last uh, type of question, and uh, not the last, uh, maybe you have more, the last uh, in terms of having a z and finding the area uh, is this one. Like, I give you a z-score, let's say that I gave you this z, which is 0 0.6, and I ask you to find the area that is above it, the area to the right of it, here. So to find this area, this is the same as, so the area is the same as the probability that z is bigger than 0 0.6, okay? And it's the area to the right, maybe we say it here, to the right or above of this Z0 equal 0 0.6, if we call this Z0. Okay? Uh, so these uh, three questions are very important to solve. Now, uh, the opposite question is also as important. So, for example, if someone gives you uh, let me make it uh, somewhere where you cannot guess quickly. So if someone gives you this area to the left of a z-score, so this is what you have now. What's given to you is the blue area or the probability. So uh, this here, the area to the left of some z-score z0 is given. Now, the Z0 will be here, but the question is, what is it? Okay, this is the opposite question to having the Z and asking for the area. Now you have the area and you ask for the Z. And this has um, uh, four uh, things, okay, four uh, uh, situations. So, area to the left, or sometimes they might give you the area to the right so this is given and they're asking you to find the point here this is z0 so find this z so that the probability that z is bigger than z0 is given you are given this area here and you need to find z0 or Another question is, you are given the area between two z-scores, but in this case, it has to be the same z-score, positive and negative. So, you are given an area like this. Notice that I chose the same point on uh, symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So, this is my z0, and this should be its negative, z0. And what you're given is the area between these two, and the question is, find the two z-scores. So here, um, this here uh, is given, the area between them, and you need to find the two z-scores. Notice that in this case, let's say you found this one. If you found it, then this one is just the negative of it, so you can find it immediately. So only find one of them. And one more question, and it's related to this one that I just erased, is if you have the area uh, to the... So we put this one here approximately. Let's do it like this. If you have the area outside or to the left of one and to the right of one, you have this combined area. So both of these areas are given. Given as one area. So they give you the sum of the two. And your uh, question is, find the two z-scores, negative z0 and z0. And because of uh, symmetry, if you find this, let's say you found it, then this one comes immediately, just take the negative. 
Okay, I just, you don't need to know any of this. Just know that there are types of questions that could be asked that we use the, the Z table for, uh, or the standard normal curve for. So now, uh, all of these questions can be solved using the Z table. This Z table has been created for the standard normal distribution curve. Okay, and I actually uh, gave you two videos. I'm just going to go remind you of my two videos uh, on YouTube. Uh, this video about how to use your Casio calculator to evaluate uh, the area to the left of a Z-score. It's a very important video to watch. It's about 10 minutes long or less, uh, about 10 minutes. Uh, and this other video of showing you how to use your calculator to go from the area back to the z-score and this is about 30 minutes long and I suggest that you pause the video now or maybe after five minutes watch these two and when you're done come back and continue uh, this video okay so let us say don't do it now just wait until uh, I talk about uh, something here yeah so the z-score uh, table is this it's given here F uh, you have the negative part of z here where you have negative and you have the positive part here for z and the numbers that you see here are the areas to the left of the z-score and because the videos that i made uh, covered this uh, in boring detail I'm not going to repeat what I said about the Z table because you can watch the two videos. Okay, but wait a little bit to watch them. Let me just say something. I also created this uh, uh, this uh, animation on Desmos. It's about the normal and inverse normal. That's the title so that I can find it easily. So let's go and open Desmos. And in Desmos, we will... Uh, go to normal and inverse normal it's here so what I want to show you now is something very nice you see the Z table uh, let's first um, open this okay so sorry I will open just this and tell you something all of these numbers that you see here uh, uh, Z and uh, the Z score and the area in both of them for the negative and the positive I'm going to show you all these numbers in like 5 seconds or 10 seconds. So using the Dismos. Look at this. The area, let's start from zero and make it move. Look at how when the area moves. Uh, first, I want you to know that uh, the Z score is what you see here where it's written undefined. This one here. And the, the one that you see here is the area the one that has zero already because we still have no area now I will let it play look at how it's moving okay so as the area increases you can see the z-score here with the x so uh, what I'm giving you is the area the area here I'm moving it from zero to one of course the maximum it could be is one when you uh, go to infinity but if you want to see the whole z table just watch the number that you see here uh, above for the area the 0 0.04 that you see and the number that you see below it is the z score so let us make it play again you watch the two numbers and try to glance on the, uh, the graph See, as the z-score goes from negative infinity to zero to infinity, the area is increasing until it reaches one. So, for example, let's say that you want the area to be exactly half. So go to 0 0.5. Notice that it's happening at the z-score zero because we know that the total area is one and so the area below zero is 50%. And uh, let's say that you go to, let's just stop, 6276. If the area is 6276, then it's coming from this Z-score. 
zero point three two five five if you want it to four digits but usually we take z scores to two digits so you can say this is coming from zero point three three okay for the z score this is nice and so let's go back to uh, here so you, in, right now you have seen the entire uh, z table uh, played in front of you in about uh, 10 seconds having all the numbers that you see here and more than them okay now uh, there is a very nice uh, online calculator that we will be using from now on so before I use it maybe now it's the time for you to pause the video and uh, watch these two uh, videos here for 40 minutes and then come back after 40 minutes so now I will assume that you came back and we will look at this uh, online calculator you can use this online calculator during your assessments uh, okay especially during the homework of course uh, so uh, let's now uh, check the next page yeah there is something important here and at the same time while I'm checking I'm going to open Dismos to get not, not Dismos sorry I will open the online calculator uh, that you can find the link to here it's linked here and it will be linked also in the uh, in the description of this video so uh, what can it do let's say that you want to check the empirical rule there is an, a rule uh, that is nice for the uh, for any normal distribution uh, that says that if you are within one standard deviation from the mean then you have about 68.27 percent of the area to, to see that this is true I'm going now to go to the online calculator and teach you how to use it so it has two options you see you have area uh, area from a value so used to compute probability from Z and this is what we need and you, you can also get a value from an area so first let's start with um, getting the area from the value so notice that I put the mean 0 and the standard deviation 1 because I want to use the standard normal curve notice that here we are talking about the standard normal curve because they're giving you that mu is 0 and sigma is 1 it's better to do it this way uh, the sigma is 1 and so when we sigma is 1 and so when we subtract it it's like subtracting 1 so it's like minus 1 okay so uh, now let's see uh, so you put the mean the standard deviation and you say I want between negative 1 and 1 so between minus 1 and 1 calculate look at the number that it's giving you 0 0.6827 and look here this is the exact area given here of course as a percentage but uh, if you want to write 0 0.6827 as a percentage of course it's 68.27 uh, uh, let us uh, quickly check uh, the second part of the empirical rule it says that if you're from negative 2 to 2 then you must get 95.45% so let's recalculate see 95.45% and the last part is if you are within standard uh, three standard uh, deviations from the mean then you get 99.73% so if you are between negative 3 and 3 calculate you get 0 0.9973 which is what you have here this is very nice okay and now I want to show you that this is true for any normal distribution not necessarily the one with mean 0 and standard deviation 1 that we call the standard normal so read with me now suppose that the IQs are normally distributed so this is very nice we know 
uh, they are normally distributed so we can use this we can use the website okay and the mean is 100 it's telling you and the standard deviation is 16 so let me write this mu is given to be 100 and the standard deviation is 16 so notice that uh, if you want to apply the empirical rule uh, the mean is in the middle so forget these for now take the mean to be 100 and the standard deviation to be 16 and uh, say that you want uh, the area between notice now mu is 100 so what is mu minus sigma this will be 100 minus the standard deviation is 16 so you get 84 this is the 84 that you see here and if you add 16 then you will get 116 as you can see here so let's see if I'm between 84 and 116, then calculate, you get 68.27% as expected. So um, I will let you uh, do the empirical rule for being two standard deviations away from the mean or three standard deviations away from the mean. Quickly, let us just make sure that you understand where is this number 52 coming from? So you see, if you are three standard deviations away from the mean, this means that uh, this number that you have here must be mu minus three standard deviations, three sigma. And this is the same as 100 minus 3 times uh, the standard deviation we said is 16 so it will be 100 minus 3 times 16 is 48 and so you get 52 that is the 52 that you see here so very nice uh, okay so let's go uh, with the notes and see what happens yeah here uh, by this time you must have watched these two videos Let's say that if you didn't listen to me and you didn't watch these two videos, watch them now, please. Pause now, watch, then come back. Okay, one important fact about uh, normal distributions and standard normal distributions, I showed it uh, to you before, but I'll do it again, is that if you have any normal distribution, anything, then you can use this formula here to go from your uh, x, from, from your random variable x, and uh, change your entire uh, normal distribution to make it the standard normal distribution. This way, you can answer questions easily using the z-table. Uh, or if you want to go in the opposite direction, let's say that you have the standard normal distribution, uh, uh, and you want to get answers about a general distribution, then you can use the formula here, which is the, uh, the opposite or the inverse. This is the inverse of the formula that you see here. Okay, so uh, next I'm going to show you uh, on Dismos also. So now we want to see the change of variables uh, x and z so that you just get a feeling of what's going on. So let's go here and look for change of variables. It's this one. And let me just make it bigger so we can see it easier. Notice here that I put the mean 6 and the standard deviation 2. So remember, in order to go, maybe it's better to open them together. In order to go from uh, let's erase this in order to go from any normal distribution to the standard normal what do you do exactly look at the formula for z you subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation so what we will do here is we will subtract the mean so the mean is 6 yes so we subtract 6, this makes the 6 become 0. So 
if we subtract it, make it zero. Yeah, these things are very sensitive. So sorry for this. I'll make it zero, yeah, M. And the standard deviation will make it one. Look what happened. So let's close this now because you got the idea. Our uh, uh, normal distribution was with mean equal 6 and standard deviation, I forgot, 2.2 maybe. So it looked like this. It had a relatively large uh, standard uh, deviation and its mean was uh, bigger than the standard normal curve mean. But when I subtracted mu and divided by sigma, Look what's happening. It's becoming my standard normal curve. Now, if you want to do the opposite, if you want to go from this now, from the standard normal curve, back to your uh, normal distribution, uh, you will first multiply by sigma. So multiply by 2.2. You'll get this shape. And then you will add mu. So you'll go to plus 6, so this, you'll get to this point here. Okay, so you go back to your uh, standard normal, uh, uh, you go back to your normal distribution from the standard uh, normal distribution. Okay, so this is all what this uh, slide is trying to tell you, but it's really nicer when you see it illustrated by a graph. Okay, notice here that we first multiply by sigma and then we add mu when we want to do the inverse because when we went from x to z we subtracted mu first then divided by sigma so now you will multiply first by sigma then you will add mu okay now uh, yes we saw this and uh, this uh, slide is just showing you that uh, no matter what normal distribution you have, you can always map it by using z equal x minus mu over sigma, map it to the standard normal distribution. Sometimes the standard normal distribution is written as SND because all distributions, you can transform them to it and make the problem easier for yourself. Uh, also, one thing that a person might ask is that when I do these transformations, what happens to the area? Does it stay the same? So if you have a normal uh, curve, just any normal curve, and uh, this area here, as you know, it's the probability that your x is between A and B. So if I use this um, transformation going from x to z is this area that i'm getting here the same as the area original area there the answer is yes and of course if you go back the area will be preserved also and to see this i'm going to show you an illustration also using dismos so look at uh, the illustration now in this illustration i will just add one button here uh, to show you the the area and I'm keeping the area at half the area is at the end you see I put the area is half the area is always from 0 to 1 as you know I'm putting it also to four digits because we always approximate areas or probabilities uh, to four digits after the decimal so now uh, let's see if you look at this green area carefully yeah try to uh, think of how much it is well, at least you know that it's half of the total area because it's exactly at uh, 6, which is the mean. See, the mean here is 6. And so uh, what we want to see is that if I transform this to the standard uh, normal curve, would the area still be half? So to, to do this, first you subtract mu, subtract 6, so you get to 0 and then divide by uh, sigma, or in this case, I'm calling it s. So divide by 2.2, it will be 1. So once it's 1, notice that it's also exactly half of uh, the area under the curve. So 
uh, nothing happened to the area. If you want to see another area, for example, let's say uh, the area is, uh, I wanted four digits. So let's say, uh, no, I wanted four digits, but four digits like this, like 7327, seven, like uh, uh, hard numbers, if you wish. And let's move it to, so I need to zoom out a little bit to show you the transformation. So in order now to go to the uh, normal distribution that we started with, first you multiply by sigma, uh, so multiply by 2.2, so this will make 2.2, and then uh, move uh, plus mu, mu was 6, so I'll add the 6, I will get to 6 here. And notice that it's giving me, uh, it will be the same area. Okay, this is nice. Area is preserved under uh, this uh, change of variables, going from x to z, or going from z back to x. So, here I also show you uh, going from x to z. This is x going to z. And uh, this one here is z going to x. These formulas are important. They are just inverses of each other. And uh, now is the time to fully understand how to use this, uh, this uh, website, this calculator. So please go to this website now and if you have uh, uh, if you can do page and page or a picture and picture it would be better to view two things at the same time like me or if you are uh, if you want to just open this example big in your laptop and then use your phone as uh, the calculator uh, you go to this website here uh, this website is also in the description of this video, okay? And so now we want to answer questions. I have just three examples, and once we finish, we'll be done with this lecture. And we will solve the three examples using technology. So uh, let's understand the exam first example first. A survey indicates that for each trip to the supermarket, a shopper spends an average of 45 minutes with a standard deviation of 12 minutes in the store. So immediately I know that mu is 45 and uh, sigma is 12. Nice to know from the beginning. Uh, the length of time spent in the store is normally distributed. Of course, I should have known this from the beginning, but because we're talking about normal distribution, all my examples will be normally distributed for this lecture. Uh, but better at the beginning, make sure it's normally distributed before you can uh, plan how to solve it. And it's represented by the variable x. So our random variable x now will mean uh, the length of time, length of time spent in, in the store. Spent in the store. So this is uh, the random variable and it's measured in minutes for this question. Make sure that, let's say that this was given in hours and this was given in minutes, then you need to change one of them to match the others, okay? To match the other one. So let's see, what are the questions that they're asking? Uh, part A, find the probability that the shopper will be in the store for between 24 and 54 minutes. We want the probability that our random variable, which represents the length of time, is between 24 minutes and 54 minutes. You want to see um, what's the probability that the shopper will spend between 24 and 54 minutes in the uh, shop. So uh, now we will open our online calculator and notice what we will do. This requires us to first change, we need mu and sigma. Mu is 45, the mean, so you go here and say the mean is 45, and the standard deviation is 12. So put 12 here, and what you need is 
the probability that x is between two values. So you say I want between, not above, not below, but between. And in between, you will put the numbers that we have. So what are the numbers between, look here, 24 to 54. So I'll put 24 to 54 and calculate. This is giving me 0. Point, you see it here, 7333. 7333. So this is telling you it's about 73.33% the probability that the shopper will stay in the supermarket between 24 and 54 minutes. Now let's do part B. Part B asks, find the probability that the shopper will be in the store more than 39 minutes. So I want the probability that x, uh, the random variable that represents the length of time spent in the store, remember here, the length of time spent in the store is what we call x. I wrote it here. So what, what is the probability that the length of time spent in the store is more than 39 minutes? This is what we need to do. More than means above. And you just put here, what was it? Above 39 minutes. So above 39. And then hit calculate. So it's giving you 0 0.6915. Which is, so this is the answer, which is 69.15%. 69.15% is what? It's the probability that the shopper will be in the store more than 39 minutes. Okay, so it's a high probability, almost 70%. Notice that it's because the mean is 45 minutes. You're expecting, on average, people to stay for 45 minutes. So if I ask you, uh, what is the probability that someone will be more than 39 minutes? You know already that 45 is the norm, is the center, is the average. So something less than it, definitely the person will spend on average uh, 45 minutes. So more than 39 should be more than 50%. So you should expect it to be something like 69% here. Okay, and the last question uh, is if 200 shoppers, the number of shoppers, 200, enter the store, how many shoppers would you expect to be in the store more than 39 minutes? Okay, so we have 200 shoppers and we want um, how many of them, see in this case it's not a probability, how many shoppers would be for more than 39 minutes? Well, we know that the probability that you stay in the supermarket or the store more than 39 minutes is 69.15. So I multiply this 600 by 0 0.6915. This is the same as asking, what is 69% of 200? And if you compute this on your calculator, so I need a calculator uh, to do uh, 0, oh, okay, so uh, 0 0.6915 times 200 shoppers, 138.3 so uh, the answer was 138.3 but because they are shoppers this uh, these are people so you'll say approximately 138 shoppers because um, you don't have decimals when you're talking about people uh, if this was for example 0. 0.6 you would say 139 shoppers approximately but since the question is, uh, uh, is uh, one, uh, has the answer 138.3, you round it to 138. Okay, so let us just quickly remember the answers. So I'm going to highlight the answer 0 0.7333, 0 0.6915, and 138 shoppers. And of course, I give you the answers on the next page, so let's check. Look at how I give you the answers, by the way. I give you the answer uh, using the right numbers uh, that you need to put. Of course, 
uh, here you need to forget uh, this is you, you forget these you just want between so it's giving it to you here 0 0.7333 uh, the second one we got the same answer and here you want above so this is these numbers you don't worry about okay uh, what matters is you put the mean right and the standard deviation right and then you look at the question and understand whether it wants above below between or outside and the answer you get here and so you write it and 138.3 or 138 shoppers from the 200 will remain for more than uh, 39 minutes and also I give you here the old-fashioned way using the z-table I'm just putting this here for you to see that we can get the same answers but it would take us considerably more time to solve it this way if we don't have uh, the calculator the online calculator here so you should be lucky if you're allowed to use this calculator because it saves you a lot of time let's go to the second question and how about this what I'm going to do first okay so let's let's keep it like this look at the example please take a screenshot of the example so this is why I need to close this take a screenshot now and try to solve it uh, by yourself and uh, check your answers on the next page of course I'm going to solve it with you so uh, uh, pause the video now okay take a screenshot now I will open the online calculator and we will solve it together so let's read the question together the monthly utility bills of a two-bedroom apartment of two-bedroom apartments in Abu Dhabi are normally distributed very nice so meaning that we can use this put a smiley face you can use it okay always put a smiley face when things are nice with a mean of 1200 dirhams so our mean is 1200 dirhams and a standard deviation of 300 dirhams standard deviation is 300 immediately now before you continue reading go here and put the mean 1200 and the standard deviation 300 and let's see what the questions are so what percent of the bills that this is part a now we're going to solve it let's use green what percent of the bills are between 900 and 1500 so we want the probability that x is between 900 and 1500 dirhams okay so here you will do between and just put the numbers 900 to 1500 and calculate so you are getting 0 0.6827 which is 68.27 percent of bills are between 900 and 1500 so you can see almost uh, two-thirds of the bills are between 900 and 1500 uh, the second question uh, let's do another color so orange what is the minimum and maximum values of the middle 95 percent of utility bills I want minimum and maximum values so now they're not asking for a probability so what I want you to do now is you go here and check you were doing area now you want value from an area because they're giving you that the area between is uh, what was the area that they gave us 95% so 95% is 0 0.95 and so calculate I put it between oh um, I'm sorry for this because it uh, put the mean zero again so our mean is 1200 and the standard deviation is 300 and I want uh, the area to be 95 percent between the two z scores so uh, between I'm, I'm sorry between the two x values one of them is the minimum and the maximum so you can say here that x minimum is and x maximum is and you just read them from here 
this is the minimum is 612.011 dirhams or approximated just it looks nicer 612 dirhams okay so this is the minimum and the maximum is here and as you can see it's 17.87.989 so what do you think I will do I will do it 1788 dirhams it's nice to have it to hold dirhams so this is telling you and you can see it on the graph above that 95 percent of uh, the utility bills the prices in the utility bills uh, are between 612 and 1788 you can see here this is almost 612 and the thing here is just a little bit below 1800 so we saw it's 1788 so it's nice that you always look at this uh, graph above that it will uh, summarize for you what you're doing and the last one here and we choose uh, a purple color find the value of the utility bill such that only five percent of utility bills is larger than it than that so uh, what this means let me just draw a normal distribution for you what we want to do here is uh, we want to find the value of the utility bill so that only five percent so here this should be five percent of the total area are above it or larger than it this has to be area equal 0 0.5 percent you know five percent is 0 0.05 notice that this also the area it's the probability that uh, x is bigger than uh, our x0 if you want to call this x0 this is the one you're looking for you're looking for this value the one here that has area uh, five percent above it or 0 0.05 above it so what we will do, we will change the area here and make it 5%. Of course, uh, mean and standard deviation are the same, but we will say that the area is above uh, the X value. So here we see clearly what is the X value. You can see it also here on the graph. So this black part of the graph is 5% of the total area. And we found that the point at which we st start here and uh, up to the end is uh, 1693.456 so this uh, we can say here x0 is approximately 169 uh, sorry 1693.456 so let's say 0.5 in dirhams it's okay to have half a dirham okay so approximately it's uh, 1693.5 dirhams is the point at which above it is five percent of all utility bill uh, amounts okay uh, and here I solve it for you of course uh, remember let's just highlight the first one that we got was 68.27 see 68.27 you can take this also as a learning experience if you just have this file that I'm writing on you can study perfectly and the second one was 612 until 1788 612 until 1788 and the last question was finding the x0 here so that 5% of all utility bill amounts are more than it and we found that it is 163.5 approximately dirhams okay our last example now so our last example uh, also try pausing now and uh, solve it and come back and check if your answer is correct or not so pause now okay so let's read the question together 
Scores for the California Peace Officer Standards and Training Test are normally distributed. Nice from the beginning. Normally distributed. Put a happy face. With a mean of 50 and the standard deviation of 10. So mean is 50. Standard deviation is 10. And let's do it. Um, I don't know which one they will ask, area or value, but at least I can put the mean is 50 and the standard deviation. Or how about this? Even though I will put them, but still we don't know. We want uh, value from an area or area from a value. So let's uh, continue reading. An agency will only hire applicants with scores in the top 10%. This is something that could happen to you in real life when you apply for jobs. Uh, they might give you a test for this job and then hire people that are in the top 10%. So what does it mean top 10%? It means the ones that are here, the ones that have 10% of, uh, of people above them, 10% or less, of course. So this area which is the probability that x is bigger than x0, x0 is what we want to find. Uh, this area is, uh, is given to be 10% uh, here. 10% means 0 0.10. So what, what this means is that the area is given. So we are on the right one. Okay, so if you do this, it's wrong. You need to do value from an area. The area is 10% uh, now, so 0 0.10. The mean is 50, uh, as you saw here. And the standard deviation is 10, so we entered them correctly. And we want the area above. So this is area above. Area above is... 10%. And so uh, calculate, it's telling us that this x0 is 62.816, so 82 approximately. Let's do it to two digits. Um, I want also, you, also to show you another way of doing this. If the area above is 10%, this means that the area below, this area here, the blue, what do you think it should be? The total area is 1, the area above is 0 0.1 or 10%, so the area below, uh, we are done solving. This is just uh, my way of showing you uh, how to solve it differently. So this area, uh, it's the area below or to the left, to the, sorry for this, I'll write the right, okay, to the left of x0, which is the probability that x less than x0, it is 90%. This is 0 0.90, where this is 0 0.10. So this is 90%. So you can go back and say the area is 90%, and I want it below. Of course, the mean and standard deviation didn't change, so the area below is... 90% uh, lotus you get the exact same answer as what you had before okay because it's the same question but you solved it differently instead of uh, solving the question directly having the area above you change it to the area below and you used the uh, online calculator okay so uh, then I show you uh, the answer here, notice, in both ways I'm showing you that you can solve it uh, with this as your 10% or with this as your 90%. In both cases, you can use the calculator. For the 10%, it's above. And of course, you have an area that uh, you want to find a value from it. So value from an area is what you choose here. Or... Uh, the other way is to do below, but notice that you must put the area to be 90% when you do below. So in both cases, notice that you get the same answer. Okay?
this is perfect. And last thing that I want to mention here is, um, okay, if you want to solve it also using the Z table, you can read what's written here. What matters is that at the end, I get the same uh, answer, 62.8. You see, we got 62. We were even uh, more accurate. It's 62.816, okay? And the old-fashioned way of using the Z table, you can do it here, read it. Uh, and uh, after this, I prepared six exercises for you. All of these six exercises can be solved using the calculator here. So uh, what I want you to do now is solve these six exercises, take your time to solve them, and then send your solutions if you're not sure about your answers. Compare with your other classmates, compare with your friends, whoever is watching my videos, and uh, check if you get all of them correctly. Or send your professor uh, questions from here if you didn't know how to answer uh, one of them or more. But what I want to suggest for you to do is when you send your professor your answers, it wouldn't hurt that you uh, take a screenshot. You see, this here is a screenshot. I took it. You know, I'm moving it uh, around. I took it after I entered the right numbers here. So if you send it to your professor or your instructor, whoever is watching, or your private teacher, they can check and see what you've done. And then it would be easier for them to tell you where you made a mistake, if you made a mistake. Okay? I want you just to uh, remember that uh, in this case, you either have to go from a value to an area, so area from a value, or value from an area. And area means probability in this case. Make sure that you understand when to click uh, this one and when to click this one. Watch this video again if you feel that it helped you. And don't forget, the most important part now is for you to do the six exercises. So please do them before your next lecture. And um, I will stop here.